Hola mi gente, Ms. Malcolm Hughes here. Welcome, welcome back. Today we are going to be discussing the most recent books I've purchased by women writers in honor of Women's History Book. <laughs> in honor of Women's History Month. Let's get right into it. So this is a book that I have been wanting for a while now. It's been on my list. It's been in my cart, on my TBR, and shout out for the little, you know, who you are for getting it for me. And that is Salvage the Bones by Jasmine Ward. Let's talk about what it's about. They heard it on the radio. A hurricane is coming threatening the town of Boy Savage, Mississippi. S's hard drinking father can feel it in his bones. Esh and her brothers are trying to help prepare, but there are other worries too. Skeeta is watching his prize pit bull, helpless as her new litter dies one by one. Randall, when not preoccupied with basketball, is busy looking after the youngest junior. And Esh, 15 and motherless among men, has just realized that she's pregnant. The children of this family have always been short on nurture, but they are fiercely loyal to one another. It is together that they will face the building storm and the day that will dawn after. So again, I've heard great things about this work, it just her as a writer, so it's one I'm really looking forward to getting into. This next one, also a shout out to the same person for purchasing it for me, but this is one that has won a big award so let's talk about it you've probably seen it everywhere and that is demon copperhead by barbara kingslaver kingsolver that's low-key a dope last name but let's get into what it's about demon copperhead is the story of a boy born to a teenage single mother in a single wide trailer with no assets beyond his dead father's good looks and copper colored hair a caustic wit and a fierce talent for survival in a plot that never pauses for breath, relayed in his own unsparing voice, Demon braves the modern perils of foster care, child labor, derelict schools, athletic success, addiction, disastrous loves, and crushing losses. Through all of it, he reckons with his own invisibility in a popular culture where even the superheroes have abandoned rural people in favor of cities. Many generations ago, Charles Dickens wrote David Copperfield from his experience as a survivor of institutional poverty and his damages to children in his society. Those problems have yet to be solved in ours. Dickens is not a prerequisite for readers of this novel, but he provided its inspiration. In transposing his epic novel to her own place and time, King Solver has enlisted his anger and compassion, and above all, his faith in the transformative powers of a good story. Demon Copperfield speaks for a new generation of lost boys and all those born into beautiful, cursed places they can't imagine leaving behind. And so I know they said it's not a prerequisite, but I do plan on reading David Copperfield before reading this. I just want to see the difference and kind of compare the two. But this is one I'm definitely looking forward to getting to. Also one that I had on my list and I'm very excited to have in my collection. And as you all can see, definitely winner of the Pulitzer Prize. So total congrats. I have this level of expectancy that these will be great reads, but I want to see if that's true, right? If you win these epic prizes, then your book should be epic. But I want to see for myself, I want to see the type of books that win. It's just something that's been percolating in my brain for a while. So I really want to see. So this is one of those reads. Next up we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Y'all, when I read this description, I knew that I wanted this in my collection and I had to have it. I was also fortunate enough to get a signed copy of this work. So I'm excited to definitely have a signed copy. But let's get into the description. France, 1714. In a moment of desperation, a young woman named Adeline meets a dangerous stranger and makes a terrible mistake. It will be 300 years before she stumbles into a hidden bookstore and discovers someone who can remember her name and suddenly everything changes. Huh, this one is just, <laughs> the description I read 
was even more descriptive than what they have on the back of the book of someone who chooses to live forever, but then everyone you meet forgets you. And I was just like fascinated by how traumatic and painful that would have to be, right? And so that's what made me really want to like have this book in my collection. So I'm really excited to read it. I've only seen good reviews, but we shall see. The next one that I have here is a second book in a trilogy. You all have seen me recently talk about the first one, but that is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. This is the second book. This is following up the Poppy War. Let's talk about what it's about. The war is over. The war has just begun. Three times throughout its history, Nakan has fought for its survival in the bloody Poppy Wars. Though the third battle has just ended, Shaman and warrior Ren cannot forget the atrocity she committed to save her people. Now she is on the run from her guilt, the opium addiction that holds her like a vice, and the murderous commands of the fiery phoenix, the vengeful god who has blessed Ren with her fearsome power. Though she does not want to live, she refuses to die until she avenges the, tra the traitorous empress who betrayed Ren's homeland to his enemies. Ren's only hope is to join forces with the powerful dragon warlord who plots to conquer Nakan, unseat the Empress, and create a new republic. But the Empress and the dragon warlord are not what they seem. The more Ren witnesses, the more she fears her love for Nakan will force her to use the, Phoenix the Phoenix's deadly power once more. Because there is nothing Ren won't sacrifice to save her country and exact her vengeance. I haven't posting my review for the poppy war yet it's coming soon it's coming soon but i am interested to see where the story will go so i'm going to continue reading next up we have ad nine by lineal linea Ackleson. and this book was actually sent over to me from the publisher so thank you so much but let's get into what it's about in northern sami the word ad nine means the land the earth and my mother these are all crucial forces within the lives of the indigenous families that animate this groundbreaking book, an astonishing verse novel that chronicles a hundred years of change, a book that will one day stand alongside Haldor, Lanix's independent people, and Sigrid Undit's Kristen Lavendatter. I'm probably mispronouncing these. These are Swedish names, I believe, sorry. As an essential Scandinavian epic, the tale begins in the 1910s as Riston and her family migrate their herd of reindeer to summer grounds. Along the way, forced to separate due to the newly formed border between Sweden and Norway, Riston loses one of her sons in the aftermath of an accident, a grief that will ripple across generations. In the wake of this tragedy, Riston struggles to manage what's left of her family and her community. In the 1970s, Liz, as part of a new generation of Sami grappling with questions of identity and inheritance, reflects on her traumatic childhood. When she was forced to leave her parents and was placed in a nomad school to be stripped of the language of her ancestors. Finally, in the 2010s, we meet Liz's daughter, Sandra, an embodiment of indigenous resilience, an activist fighting for reparations in a highly publicized land rights trial, in a time when Sami language is all but lost. Weaving together the voices of half a dozen characters, from elders to young people unsure of their heritage, Axelson has created a moving family saga around the consequences of colonial settlement. Adnan is a powerful reminder of how durable language can be, even when it is borrowed, especially when it has to hold what no longer remains. I was the weight and the stone you brought back from the coast to place on my grave, one character says to another from beyond the grave. And I flew above the boat calling to you all. There will be rain. There will be rain. I remember reading this description and wanting this book. So I'm very excited to check it out. All right. Our next book in honor of Women's History Month is the second part of a series that I've read. I read the first one. I'm excited to get into the second one. And that is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is book two in the Legend Born cycle. So if you remember Legend Born, this is the second book. Let's get into what it's about. Aubrey wanted was to uncover the truth behind her mother's death. So she infiltrated the Legend Born order, a secret society descended from King Arthur's knights, only to discover her own ancestral power. Now Brie has become someone new. 
a medium, a blood crafter, a scion. But the ancient war between demons and the order is rising to a deadly peak. And Nick, the legend-born boy Bree fell in love with, has been kidnapped. Bree wants to fight, but the regions who rule the order won't let her. To them, she is an unknown girl with unheard of power, and as the living anchor for the spell that preserves the legend-born cycle, she must be protected. When the regions reveal they will do whatever it takes to hide the war, Bree and her friends must go on the run to rescue Nick themselves. But enemies are everywhere. Bree's own powers are unpredictable and dangerous, and she can't escape her growing attraction to Selwyn, the mage sworn to protect Nick until death. If Bree has any hope of saving herself and the people she loves, she must learn to control her powers from the ancestors who wielded them first without losing herself in the process. I'm excited to read all of these works. They sound amazing. I'm very grateful to have them in my collection. Cannot wait to crack them open, check them out, and come and talk about them with all of you. But those are the books that I wanted to share today. Happy Women's History Month, as always. Until the next time, I am Ms. Malcolm Hughes, one who believes that books are sometimes better than people. Please remember to give time time, to be kind to each other, and to have the very best day of your life on purpose. And remember to read more books written by women. Until the next one, peace, adabo, adios, ciao.